Today, we'll be talking about how to measure stream discharge. This lesson was made by Andy Long and Mariah Thrush as part of Ohio University's NSF-funded Boat of Knowledge in the Science Classroom. There are several ways to measure stream discharge with a wide array of equipment. Floats can be timed for velocity between two points. Acoustics use the Doppler effect to measure the velocity of individual particles carried by the water. Weirs and flumes, pictured here, can be used to measure flow by taking a few discharge measurements at low and high flows, then correlating the flows to the height of the water through the weir. Gauging stations from the United States Geological Survey, or the USGS, constantly measure stream discharge and is a useful tool for researchers and both professional and recreational boaters. The USGS is a science organization that provides impartial information on the health of our ecosystems and environment, the natural hazards that threaten us, the natural resources we rely on, the impacts of climate and land use change, and the core science systems that help us provide timely, relevant, and usable information. These pictures show some of the surveying and monitoring services the USGS provides. From these pictures and what you know, Pause the video and brainstorm some of the examples of issues USGS does and does not deal with. The USGS deals with water measurements, including discharge and some chemical measurements, map creation, earthquake surveillance, climate change tracking, and mineral resources management. The USGS does not deal with most biological or organismal aspects. Other government departments, such as the Environmental Protection Agency and the Fish and Wildlife Service, deal with this. Today, we'll be focusing on gauging stations and what kind of measurements are taken to make sure these gauging stations are accurate. As I've already mentioned, USGS stream gauges constantly monitor the discharge of streams across the nation. This data provides scientists and engineers with a reliable source of data and can help land managers and other officials know when to issue flood warnings in regions near rivers and streams. Go to water.usgs.gov and explore the gauging stations in your state and near your school by finding this graphic and finding your state in the form or map drop-down menu. The form will provide you with a list of stations in the state while the map will show them across the region. How many gauging stations are near you? Click on one of the stations to see discharge data. You'll see a graph like this one. Adjust the time scale and see how discharge has changed over time and through the seasons. Some stations only have a few years worth of data, while others might have decades of information. These gauge stations have automated sampling procedures, but some people from the USGS go to these gauges periodically and measure the discharge separately from the gauge to be sure the gauge is still properly calibrated. The first step is to measure the stream gauge, or water depth. After the depth is known, researchers can take a few more measurements to calculate the stream discharge. When a large amount of discharge measurements have been collected over a variety of stream stage levels, then researchers can create a rating curve. The depth of water in a stream is called the stream stage. You've probably seen some manual recording rubrics on bridge supports or docks. These are easy to read, but require someone to constantly observe and record the readings. Digital recording doesn't require anyone to record the discharge. Instead, floats in the system signal to the computer that the stream stage has changed and the distance the float has moved will be recorded and sent to a central computer via satellite. Let's start with the math of stream discharge. To calculate the discharge, denoted here as Q, we'll need to know the water velocity and the cross-sectional area of the stream. Area, calculated in square feet, is multiplied by velocity, calculated in feet per second. What are the units for discharge? Pause the video and take a few minutes to convert the units. Multiplying the units gives us cubic feet per second but you can also see it written this way. So if the water velocity was found to be five feet per second in a stream with a cross-sectional area of seven square feet, what is the calculated water discharge? Remember to include your units. The 
the discharge is 35 cubic feet per second. The mathematical calculation is relatively straightforward, but finding the area of a stream can be somewhat tricky. When we think of area, we define it as length times height, creating a rectangle. Stream beds are never perfect rectangles, so the cross section of a stream is split into several rectangles, and the velocity of each rectangle is measured. Would it be okay to take one velocity measurement for the entire stream? To put it another way, are the velocities of each cross-sectional rectangle identical? Pause the video and take a few minutes to discuss. The velocity of a stream is not identical across the cross-sectional area. The velocity will change with depth and total width of the stream. Why do you think the velocity varies and where do the highest and lowest velocities occur? Pause the video and brainstorm with your classmates. Friction due to the stream bottom and sides will slow the velocity. Knowing this, where is friction at a minimum? Here, we have a diagram of water velocity in a stream, both from above and from the side. In the above view, we can see that the stream banks or sides slow the velocity and water travels fastest in the middle of the stream. From the side view, we can see that water velocity is slowest on the stream bottom. Knowing this, which velocity is greater, section A or section B? Because section B is closer to the stream sides and bottom, it will have a smaller, slower velocity. Section A will have less friction acting on it, so it will be moving faster. How is velocity measured? There are several different tools available, but a flow meter is the most common. The picture with a red border shows the propeller portion of the meter, which spins faster the greater the water velocity is. A digital reader can detect the revolutions per second of the propeller and calculate the instantaneous velocity. The propeller can be adjusted up and down the rod to measure velocities at different water depths. For USGS staff dealing with large waterways, the area of a stream is often found by surveying a cross-section of a stream. The measured elevations of the stream bed and banks are surveyed and compared to a USGS benchmark. These benchmarks, pictured here, are official and reliable marks that report the exact point above mean sea level. They're all over the country, so keep your eye out for these small circles on the ground. So now we know the math and methodology of measuring discharge in a stream. Let's go through these combined steps. First, measure the entire width of the stream. This means that the measurement should be from one edge of the water to the other. In this case, it's 15 feet. Once the stream width is measured, split it into equal parts creating cross-sectional rectangles. The number of rectangles depends on the variability of the stream bottom. If the stream bottom looks more like hills and valleys than flat plains, then more rectangles are needed. Next, measure the depth in the center of each rectangle, then compute the area of each rectangle. The depths are given to you, but how do you calculate the width? Remembering the width of the stream is 15 feet, we can figure out the widths. We can fill out this table writing the widths and the depths and then calculate the areas. Pause the video and complete your calculations. For the sake of space, I didn't include the units, but you should use units. Next, calculate the average velocity of each rectangle. To find the average, velocities are measured at 0.2 of the total depth and 0.8 of the total depth. The velocities are listed here for the 0.2 depth. These are the velocities for the 0.8 depth. Now that we have measurements for both depths, pause the video and calculate the average velocity.
Again, I didn't include units for the sake of space, but be sure to include them in your work. Now that we have the area and the average velocity of each rectangle, it's time to calculate discharge. Remember, area multiplied by velocity equals discharge. Pause the video and complete the calculations for each rectangle. Then add all discharge values together to find the total discharge. The total discharge of this stream section is 61.9 cubic feet per second. Now that you know all the steps, pause the video and fill out this table to find the discharge of this stream section. The total stream discharge is 366.3 cubic feet per second. Your number might vary slightly from this depending on rounding, but make sure you have included units. We won't be calculating a rating curve today, but being able to read a rating curve graph is useful. Notice that discharge is on the x-axis, and stream stage, remembering that stream depth, is on the y-axis. We can plot points on the graph and connect the dots to a smooth line. From this graph, we can simply measure the stage to find the discharge, or we can make predictions about the discharge from the projected stage measurements. For the rating curve to be accurate, the discharge must be measured many times over a wide variety of stream stages to get the most data possible. Now that you have practiced calculating stream discharges, take your skills to the field and learn how to use a flow meter. You will measure the discharge of two sections in a stream, then compare the discharges of each section to one another and to the discharge measurements of a nearby USGS stream gauge.